Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 269. And if you've watched the Artcaster for any length of time, then you will know who our guest is today because he kind of started this whole thing way back, way back 269 episodes ago. <laughs> But we'll, we'll get to Jeff in a minute, but first we'll do the rounds like we always do. You're on my channel, so you should probably know where to find me um, unless, you know, unless uh, maybe you come in here through, through Jeff and you're not familiar with me. Uh, I'm Scott Circlin, uh, CircWorks Art Labs. You can find my stuff at CircWorks.com. And I don't have the poster that Josh did because I would promote that. But if you just go to my website right now, you can get this cool poster that Josh designed of my characters from Young and the Dead. Um, and it's a uh, super limited quantity. So definitely check that out. And you can check out on YouTube. Um, I'm Surfworks on YouTube. And I have a series called Making Comics 101. If you're interested in learning how to create comics or you just need to brush up on creating comics, it is a course. It's like, uh, what is it? I think it's like, I think it's like 70 episodes, uh, everything from start to finish on how to create comics, everything from coming up with your idea all the way to publishing, marketing your work and every single step in between. So it's a really good course. You can check that out at CircWorks uh, on YouTube. And uh, with me as always is my co-host, Josh. Josh, what do you got going on? How's it going? So uh, I will just share this. I don't know how well this will share, but let me see if I can find this. So, oh, it doesn't share too well. Well, you'll see this price right there. That's uh, eleven seventy nine, um, and that's what you can currently get two stories, my graphic novel for, which is almost half off. So. I don't know why that is, but that's on Amazon. So I would just recommend if you guys haven't picked up my graphic novel about faith and mental illness that I hand write, hand letter, hand ink. It's a nice, thick 122-page book. Um, yeah, it's a good time to get it because that'll save you some cash. And if you have Prime, it's free shipping. So otherwise, you can get it at pretty much any online bookseller. But I'm recommending people go there because you can save some money. So, yeah. Awesome. So do you set do you set the price or is that done through your publisher? No, that is I, I don't even think that's my publisher. That's literally just Amazon sometimes like lowers think, the price. Can Amazon do that? I, I yes, don't Yes, they can. <laughs> they can? Oh, that's yeah. weird. That's crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I looked it up cuz I was kind of like not sure what was going on with that and I found out that they just kind of run their own little algorithm with it which Sometimes screws over publishers and bookstores, but huh. Huh. I don't know. But it I wonder helps. if it helps. The, have you noticed if it helps with the sales? Uh, I have no they idea. Might, yeah, <laughs> I wonder if they're trying to boost your sales. I yes, yeah, I'm curious. I'm, but I'm like, I, take I advantage of it. Case. You know, I mean, if yeah. if uh, if people haven't checked out the work, I mean, I definitely will make less on the sale, yeah. but I but I'm. I want more people to read it. So well, that's hopefully they doing. don't do that with KDP books because the profit margin is so, so small anyway. <laughs> if you're probably giving away for free, I don't think they do it with KDP though. You, you should look at it, look it up online because I've yeah. heard they do. <laughs> 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 I learned. All right. It, yeah. <laughs> so without further delay, we have got Jeff Lafferty back on the show. Hey Jeff, how's it going? It's been a while. <laughs> hey Scott, hey, Josh. Yeah. Well, internet. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's been a while that some people might have seen your face and you've kind of been in hiding. But before we get into all that, what's been going on, um, uh, let us know. Is there anything you, you're you promoting or anywhere you want to send people to? I've got your website up here. Uh, my website's fine. Yeah. You know, and I'm on YouTube. But, you know, I haven't been really posting any videos. So uh, that's about it. Yeah. But are you open for commissions or what are you looking for? I I am always open for commissions. Um, I have a lot though, so okay. you know. All right. It's like, <laughs> if you so don't mind in waiting line, a bit, get in line or or just wait a little bit and then then contact Jeff. <laughs> but it's good that you're busy. You got you got too much to do. That's not like, that's kind of a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So so like I said, we haven't talked to Jeff in a little while. I mean, he was on the show not. I mean, I forgot how long ago it was. It wasn't that long ago, but um, but seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it was about twelve. We did. 12 years I, mean, ago I, mean, I haven't done the math. Do you remember when when we started this, Jeff? How many oh, years God. ago? Maybe like the year or 
Well, or, just yeah, kind of, or yeah, roughly. It's been, it's been let's see. Um, we got Kevin divorced. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Scott, that was lost his career as a greeting card artist or whatever. Yeah, you're doing now. yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time, man. Yeah, and well, and and it, yeah, like Josh got born onto the internet. Yeah, he yeah. came after that. So yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. You guys gave birth to me. I'm the child. <laughs> Of, yeah, just, of your your art cast. <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to know what it's like, those episodes are still up. You can go way, way back to episode yeah. one. And I should watch that. I should rewatch that just to see how far we've come and see kind of what it's what the difference is. I don't watch any of those old episodes, but they're probably still good. We could probably mine some of those old episodes for topic ideas and things because I don't know how many people are going that far back and checking stuff out. So oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that is weird. Like that is a good point. Frank was just pointing out I didn't even have a beard back then. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you didn't? Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Man. Yeah. And then we have to go back and see how far when your first episode was, Josh. Oh, man. I think I was in like the hundreds, possibly. Okay. Maybe it was before the hundreds. We've been going a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so so anyway, so you know, if 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 you follow Jeff at all, you know he's uh, in the he's been pretty prevalent on YouTube and everything, um, but he is you kind of been a little absent from that, and I kind of because and usually that's how I keep track of what you're up to, so I kind of ask what you're up to, and you're you're kind of like, well, not much. I'm kind of doing uh, do, doing commissions and everything, so and and. I asked kind of what, what you're up to so we could figure out a topic. And you said, well, how about burnout? So <laughs> I think that's something we've all, we've all been through. And, yeah. uh, but so I first, I guess I want to talk about YouTube because I think you and I might share some of the same kind of thoughts on YouTube. And um, okay. because I, I mean, you, 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 you got, I mean, you definitely got a bigger channel. You probably twice more than twice what I have, but I, I kind of noticed like, you and I both seem to have the, the problem where our views aren't really matching what our subscriber counts are. Like, yeah. cause I think, you know, I, I was looking at, it seemed like some of your, I mean, obviously we all have videos that, that, that go nuts and get, you know, yeah. tens and hundreds of thousands of views, but then, but the average view for me is around 300 with 17, Right. thousand subscribers you're at what around 40 something thousand and your average views are what around 500 maybe uh i don't know i mean yeah. I, I honestly haven't even looked at my subscriber count yeah. in like months but yeah that sounds about right even i would say that's even high for your average video yeah you know? so i don't know if that yeah. was part of your frustration with youtube because that, that's always in the back of my mind i'm kind of i'm trying to yeah. shift my way of thinking away from that and and, and I'm trying to, I've been doing this leadership training. And one of the things that kind of teaches you is that you kind of, you decide, you kind of, you're in control and you kind of decide how to, that everything's sort of neutral and you, you imprint whether it's good or bad or, you know, you, you, oh, yeah. you know, so, so I'm, I'm going to try to approach it from a different aspect and see if I can, I can, instead of blaming the algorithm and everything, if I can kind of do some proactive things to get it to grow, but, but I don't know. I mean, but that's always been my thought in the past. And, and even though I've, you know, I don't know, you know, as frustrated as I've been, I've always at least put out that one video without fail, but, but there's times where I'm like, is this even worth it? You know? Yeah, so I don't yeah. know. I mean, are you, are you kind of in that same boat or? Um, no, I mean, I think I got disillusioned with YouTube, like in that way, like a lot earlier. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I kind of, I just gave up on the view thing and especially once you get views and then you kind of see the money that comes in and, and it doesn't right. really, you know, it's like, there's a lot of YouTubers who kind of like, I think pump up like what, you know, having some kind of like presence on YouTube can get you. And then when you really see like what it does actually get you, what, what like a lot of views on a video get yeah. and you're like, well, that's not. It's, you know, I, I think <laughs> it's like, this is almost like how I, I equated it is like when it's like a con, like nowadays, like you go to a convention and there's like 200 artists in there, you know? Yeah. And 
you kind of go and they all have their 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 prints they have their little booth they have the whole setup a lot of them have their comics or their art books i mean they all are selling you know stuff but then if you went and like you went one by one and you kind of like asked each one of them like you know what what they do what they do for a living what you know how this is actually working for them i bet like 98 percent of them or even more are just like, well, you know, this is what I do, you know, and, but the rest of the time I work at like 7-Eleven or I work like yeah. a job or, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. a, a ton of them just show up and lose money at cons and spend a bunch of money on prints and don't sell them and that kind of thing. And yeah. I feel like YouTube's a little bit the same way. I think there's like a whole bunch of people that come on YouTube and sort of like, you know, talk about how great YouTube is and how much money you can make. And it's just, it's not reality. It's, it's like they're living in their parents' basement and, you know, they're really not <laughs> making any money. And, but that doesn't matter. It's, it, I'm not busting on those people or right. whatever. I just feel like, you know, I, I don't know. It, I, you know, like I, I, I can't figure out how to like get views or get subscribers right. or well, any well, of that stuff. So I've just given up on it a long time ago. Yeah. And I totally agree yeah. with you on, on that part, at least yeah. in, in my experience, like the, the ad revenue is, is really nothing. I mean, you know, I mean, there are people, you know, there's exceptions to every rule and there's a lot of people that can make a lot of money off the ad revenue. Um, but at least in my experience, it hasn't, I mean, that's not why I'm doing YouTube or else I probably would have quit a long time ago, but, yeah. but I would imagine I'd like in my case, I know that it helps with the sales of like my digital products and that's how people find me. Cause that's where I'm most present. Cause I'm really not, I'm, I kind of moved away from all pretty much all other social media. I mean, I'm still on like right. Facebook technically, but I don't post a lot. I hardly, I don't think I posted on Instagram in over a year and I don't, honestly, I don't miss it. You know, I don't, I, Instagram is definitely, and Facebook are, are two that I definitely haven't figured out how to kind of, you know, monetize. But yeah. with YouTube, I I think just my presence on YouTube has helped me, you know, sell digital products and build awareness. And it's definitely building up my, I mean, my videos are helping me build my mailing list and, you know, and all that stuff. So even though the ad revenue isn't a lot, I think yeah. there's a lot of other stuff that comes along to it. So I would imagine with, with your YouTube channel, even if you're not currently posting a lot, your the, the amount of videos you have up there and people finding those videos and, and be in, being introduced to, you know, your artwork is probably helping you, you know, with your, your commissions and things like that. Well, that, that, that's true. And that's how I look at it. And, and I agree. That's probably like the benefit, you know, you get out of, out of your channel is, is that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know that it really like with the, I mean, it, it does. There are people who, and they specifically say, you know, I saw you on YouTube and you know, when they, when they buy stuff from me, but um, I, I don't know. I got kind of lost as, as what we were talking about. <laughs> I was just talking, <laughs> well, we were talking about kind of, cause you said you were kind of burnt out. And part of that was obvious. It was probably the, the YouTube channel because you haven't been as active on the YouTube channel. Oh. So. Well, I think that, that's part of it though. It, 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 it's just like, I guess I kind of, um, I don't know. I just, it, it, you know, you do so many videos. I mean, I probably have yeah. like, I know I've got like over 600 videos at least, Yeah. you know, cause like my art cast is like number whatever, five something. And then there's like yeah. a whole bunch of like stop motion videos and all this other <laughs> shit that I did on there. And so, you know, I've made a video about every freaking thing I can think of and <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it, it There is a point where like when me and Jebron were doing the show, it's like, that's just kind of hanging out and drawing. I like that. Yeah. But then I seem to not be able to get along with anybody long enough to kind of keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what, what I can use YouTube for anymore. It's yeah. like, that to me is like my burnout with it. It's just, it's yeah. just like what, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore on YouTube. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is difficult. I mean, I'm like, because I'm trying to figure out, because right now I was just talking to Josh earlier about how right now I'm just doing the 100 Days of Making Comics videos. And those are my videos, but it's basically me just talking about my challenge. And I'm hoping other people are getting something out of it, like either inspiration or whatever. But sure. it really is me talking about my own stuff. And, and unless you're like some big celebrity that people actually care what you're doing. <laughs> you know? I mean, to, I, think, to this extent, I mean, there are people that care. I, I understand I think, that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what, like you're saying, like the, the key to the big views are, but I do think that there are like, that's the key to like, 
each like the small views, like the people who come back and watch and actually watch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You don't catch those like hundred thousand people in, in the, in the sidebar kind of views. But I mean, the, the ones that like, you know, that, that watch the hundred days of comics videos and things like that, those are, those are like, you know, the ones that just stick with you forever. It seems oh, like. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's the core audience. But I mean, but I'm, so I'm trying to figure out once, once, I finish my 100 days. What I'm going to do next is I, I do want to I want to attempt to see what I can do to to help grow the channel and create some cool content and kind of rejuvenate my interest in YouTube. You know, but right now it's kind of like I'm just sort of on autopilot. Did the um, I have a question though? Yeah. I remember the last time I was on, you were you were kind of in the midst of this, like you know, how to make comics. Uh, I don't know, like thing like a, a series of like how to make comics but you're gonna like do like 200 videos of like how to make comics and i was wondering because like obviously like i've seen channels for it with um where those how to make comics you know on the title mm -hmm. go and you know it's like you'll see you'll get see guys with like a channel and then like their one comic about how to make a comic is like the one that where they get a whole bunch of views you know yeah did did that work though did did you have any of those that like just blew up that's the thing that i was kind of surprised and a little um <laughs> little disheartened by was that that out of all those videos there weren't any that that like went viral you know that i just figured i i kind of was hoping that that would be the case i mean i'm still yeah. but i did i did finish the series i mean that's kind of what i was promoting at the, at the beginning of this video was that 100 day uh, or i'm sorry the making comics 101 so it's like right it's like 70, probably, yeah. yeah there's like 70 episodes and i completed the series and i've done a few live versions and i'll probably go back because you know and it's just q a like i'll do live versions where i just it's kind of the same idea but i just answer questions and most of that stuff is already answered in those videos because i basically covered you know pretty much everything at least touched on everything i didn't go deep on everything but and it was it was one of those videos where it was kind of like that was my first attempt at like i'm going to try to create a ton of value i get a lot of people saying that i'm like long-winded and i ramble so i'm going to make yeah, it super I concise i'm going to edit it i'm going to throw a bunch of b-roll and as far as the content on my channel it's what i'm most proud of that's why i still continue to promote it and i still think that there's because I don't know about you, uh, Jeff, but I've had videos that didn't really hit till years later. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, so I still think there's potential with that happening. But, um, but yeah, I kind of thought at least I thought if, if one of these videos just hit and people see it, then they're like, Oh wait, there's a whole series of these. And yeah. the other thing I'm proud of about that is there are a bunch of other people that started doing something like that, like, and never finished it. So, yeah. I mean, I've got those 70 episodes I set out to do and I completed them. And to my knowledge, there's not, there's no, and this, that, I mean, I think and I'm proud of this because there's, you know, it's saying a lot because out of all the videos out there on YouTube, all the channels dedicated, dedicated to comics, I don't think there's anything as, as, um, as sort of as complete as the series that I did that basically covers everything that's, you know, it's concise. It starts. It starts in the beginning. Yeah. It takes you all the way through. I don't think there's anything else like there, like that out there on YouTube. So, um, it's kind of it's you know it to me it's it kind of bums me out a little bit that it didn't become a bigger success. But I still have faith in it. And and all that content, you know, I can still there's still ways that I can try to use. Like one of the things I might do is I might take each individual because they were like half hour episodes at, at the most. So if yeah. I, I do an episode on inking, but it's, you know, it's like how to, how to make comics the Marvel way where it's a great book, but it's, it's just, it basically touches on everything you need to know and it doesn't go super deep. Yeah. So I could, you know, expand on that or I could do, I mean, I could even, I could find ways like if I wanted to try to monetize it and make like a paid course based on that, that's just on inking or just on lettering or something like that. So so I, I, I've got a lot, I mean, there's a lot I think I can draw from, from that, but. Right. And, and I think you're, you're hundred percent right. Cause like every one of like my videos that have, have gotten a lot of views, they never got it right off the bat. Yeah. Every one of them seemed to like be three years in and then all of a sudden somebody starts watching it. And what's odd, I also think is a lot of those videos that go big, 
are the ones that go big again. It's like they get, they hit a whole bunch of views for like three months and then they'll just die. And then they'll come back, you know, like six months later or something and get a whole bunch of views again and stuff. So any yeah. one of those could like, you know, do that. So you're right. I think, you know, but I just was curious if it, you know, if it had taken off yet. <laughs> not, so, but not so much, but the thing is, I mean, if you're searching for things, people have found it. Like I, I just did a, I just did an interview with a, a men's magazine. It's, it's online, but it's a, I mean, it's, it's a real professional magazine. It's, and it's, a, it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's funded by like the, the people behind Dollar Shave Club. So, I mean, it's got backing and everything and it's got great writers and talent working on it, but they interviewed me for on sound effects because they found my video. So people of note are finding it like that, that article I did, I was, it was, they interviewed me and Tom DeFalco from Marvel. So, you know, I mean, that's, you know, yeah, so it's like they put me in that same category based on that. So it's given me, you know, it's given me a little bit of a gravitas, you know, so, you know, I can, it, it's, and it, like I said, it's well done. And it, the, the weird thing, the cool thing is, even though, you know, maybe it doesn't get tons of view, it only takes, it only really takes one person, the right person to find it. You know, if one person finds it, I mean, that could either, either whether they have a big, you know, audience that they share it to, or it could lead to like, like, a, like a work, like work, or, you know, who knows somebody like maybe Skillshare happens upon it and they, they want me to, do a class you never know what could happen but if but it, it kind of it it kind of solidifies you as an expert you know mm -hmm. so so yeah that that part is that that's pretty that, that's part pretty is pretty cool but uh so frank was talking that he was mentioning one of my videos i've got the i've got this video uh it's how to make comics the marvel way is it is it good advice or is it propaganda and that one does get pretty good views, Frank. I've actually got one. Uh, I've got some other videos that I've got one that's got hundreds of thousands of views. My sticker yeah. video does really well. And that's one thing that that's one that I do want to revisit because when I made that sticker video, I mean, I've learned a lot since then. I've got some some new ideas. And also I've got another video. It's not as popular, but on, on the wax packs, like the old, you know, trading card wax packs. And I've got some new techniques on how to do that. So I want to combine those two things and make a video. So there's stuff like that that I that I want to do when I get back to doing other content other than the 100 days. But yeah, I mean. 100 days again? For like yeah. What, how many times is it now? Well, <laughs> so, so this is my <laughs> oh, fourth I mean, time. But the, technically, cool. if I, and this time I set out, I set out that I was going to do it an hour a day instead of 30 minutes. Nice. Um, just because I wanted to get back to doing my comic and it, that's always helped me in the past, but I'm not doing a daily updates. I mean, mm. I kind of proved that I can do that. So the daily, as you know, when you do the daily updates, it does take a little bit away from, yeah. you know, the time you could be working on the comic because the editing and everything. But even though I, I always recommend it, if you're, if you're doing it for the first time to do the, do the daily updates, but if you've done the challenge yeah. you know, successfully, then, then you don't have to do that. But, but yeah, so it's helping me, but I did kind of, I got in a situation where I, I, I couldn't, and I just did a video on this where I technically, I, I wasn't able to do it for two days. So, um, I just, because it conflicted with something that I, you know, a contract that I signed that I wasn't like, you know, it's, you can watch the video if you want, but that's the, he had that's to go to the perfect. hospital people get off his back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so, but yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's just, help, it's helping me, uh, it's helping me get, get back to work on my comic. And I, so I, in this this time around i scripted the last two issues so i've got the whole story is finally done and i'm excited about it because i'm happy with it and now wow, I'm, I'm working awesome. on issue i'm working on issue five and then i want to once i complete and my goal is at the end of three months that i'm going to have it penciled and inked and that's the bulk of it you know after that i'll still have to do the shading and the lettering and the design and everything but but so so yeah it's coming along so it's it feels good to just be <laughs> keep working on my comic again you know yeah that's really great man so i guess that can lead us into you know when you're saying you're burnt out i mean i assume that does that go also with with your comics like with berserk or not have you taken a break from that as well or uh well yeah the berserk or not's not happening um at this point though right. you know it's just kind of one of those things where i imagine i'm gonna pick it up again at some Ooh. point but you know, I, I don't know. It's like, yeah. um, 
I don't know. I don't <laughs> Yeah, it's, no, I get I it. I mean, I've like, taken good know, breaks from my comic. I mean, like right. I said, eventually you get to the point where you're just like, oh, I got to get back to this. And I, I'm pretty sure you probably will at some point. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I, I still want to tell the story and I want to finish it. You know, I want I want to have like the graphic novel, but beyond that, I just want to tell the story so that people that read it can kind of actually read the story. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's really I don't I don't know. Like, I'm almost like you. Maybe I need to do the hundred days of comics again, but I, I just can't face videos every day. Yeah, again. Right. <laughs> you know, because I, I I feel like I need that. Um, I need that push. You know, yeah. like that because it, it's like working. I, I'm not good at this, like working and making it, especially if, like something like that, like commission things like that. I'm, I'm I am good at, you know. It's like people give me a job to do. It's like I get on it and do it. But it's like this mu week after week of drawing panels that you don't really show anybody that don't really make you any money. That you know what I mean. Yeah. That stuff is just hard to keep going on. Uh, you know? yeah, talking about. <laughs> exactly. So it it that. You know, that I think that's part of it. I mean, I've thought about because like the first time I did it as a web comic, and I've I really considered just be like, okay, I'm gonna just do it as a web comic, you know what I mean? And then print it later, or just print it as as you get to like every you know 24 pages or something. And that's probably I guess how I'll do it when I when I do get back to it. So yeah, I mean, when you do get back to it, you know. I mean, the way you were doing it made sense too, because you were just kind of live streaming. You weren't having to do a lot of editing and stuff like that. But yeah, that, I mean, that actually it did work. Yeah, on the show, I I agree. That was a good way to do it too. Yeah, but you could all you could just as easily just do it once a week updates or whatever. Or just post on you know even just post on Insta or whatever Facebook or whatever that we're doing it or whatever. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like so, I'm curious because like. Um, I always find myself like riding the edge of potential burnout, you know? Um, yeah. And I mean, like lately it's been a real battle uh, for me to not burn out because I've, I've probably roughed about, I'm doing like rough pencils and thumbnails all together for like the second graphic novel. And um, I'm, I'm at like page 109 or something. And now I have to work on, on this pitch that we're shopping around. And then also I'm fighting the struggle I think most indie cartoonists have, which is I have a book out and no one gives a shit. <laughs> mm. And I mean, not that they don't, like it's moving and there are people buying it, but it's just my own perception always is like of it not doing well, which yeah. is weird. Cause it's not doing bad for an indie book. It's just like, it's, it's fighting. I guess my point is, I find myself in my career always personally fighting like a grass is greener kind of thing Yeah. where, um, and I, I don't know if this is at all like what you're experiencing, but for me, it's like with my burn, whenever I kind of end up burnt out, it's cause I overdid it or because like, I'm kind of focused on like, I don't know, like, uh, like there's some cartoonist out there who's having more fun doing it or, yeah, or there's another art director who knows how to art direct and like, they're having fun doing art direction or like the, the point being, it's always like, there's somebody out there who's got to figure it out and I don't kind of thing. Um, yeah, you know, and even with like yeah. YouTube, like I wasn't making content for a while, but what I've started to do is just like not care That's about my views or anything like that. Like I'm just having fun. Like I need to work anyway. At every night I pretty much work at really weird hours. So I just started doing live streams. And then the weird thing is people actually show up and it's not like a ton of people. Once again, if I want to burn out about it, I'll be like, Oh, it's only so many people, whatever. But yeah, it's like, it is people and it's like people hanging out with me at like three in the morning, like working on art, you know, and it's like, crazy. that's awesome. Like it, it's, it's way more awesome to do that than like cartoon alone. And, you know, cause most of, most of my first graphic novel was made like at like three in the morning alone, you know? Yeah. So it's like a neat way to like do that work, but have company. But I don't know. I like, for me, it's like, um, 
that I, that might just be my own thing, but it's like, that's one of my big struggles is like when I, when I get my book out, I'm like, well, yeah, but it doesn't have this or it hasn't, you know, won this or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Um, or it's not sold here. Like it's sold there, but it's not sold here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I get in like that mode. So for me that causes burnout. And then the other thing that causes burnout is I'm just a workaholic. And so it's like, yeah, I tend to ride this fine line of, um, it's like, I, I always want to ride the line of like productivity, but sometimes I ride it like a little too far and then just yeah. you know, burn out. So I don't know. I don't know what kind of, what, what realm of that you might be <laughs> experiencing or if yours is different. Um, but Mine, like for me, that's what I've seen. Yeah. Mine is definitely more just, just kind of tired of YouTube. Because yeah. it's like I still do my art and stuff. It's like I, I don't really feel burnout there, but I've done that where you feel like you're drawing like so much, you know, especially when you're doing commissions all the time. Yeah. You know, that like you're when you're trying to get more done because it pays more, you know, you make more money. Yeah. And you're just like drawing like all the fucking time until you're just like, I don't care about what I draw anymore. You know what I mean? That totally sucks. But I, I get that. And then the other thing I do get is like what you were saying about kind of the success thing or or looking at other artists where it seems like, like you said, like they're having more fun than you. Yeah. Or I remember when I took the Berserker not finally I took it down to the comic shop. You know, like I always had this big plan of going to the distributor and, um, you know, going through Diamond and getting it out. And, it, you know, that didn't didn't work. I um I told that story. They just, they didn't want to take any books that weren't like three issues from like a new publisher or whatever, you know, you want to call me. And so they were like, you know, come back with it. <laughs> I'm like, come back three issues. It's probably like two years from now. But um, <laughs> anyway, I, so that didn't happen. And then, you know, just, I was, you know, sending them from here. It's all I'm on eBay and stuff. But I finally, I just took them down to the comic shop in Boulder and like Wayne took like 10 of them and I was like, oh, that's really cool. He took 10 of them. And I went in the next week and I looked at the stand and there was fucking nine of them there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I thought I could at least sell 10, you know what I mean? And like, I only sold one the whole week. It was just devastating. You know, I just was like, oh my God, what, what a waste of time this was, you know, and all that. But I don't know if you can really look at it that way, you know, because it's, yeah. It's, you know, I, I don't know. You know, it's it's one of those things where I, I'm not sure how you look at it. You know, it worked in on Indiegogo. So does it really matter that it only yeah. sold one out of the comic shop? I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, I didn't I haven't even I, I make zero effort to try to get my in our stores. I mean, it's in my local store just because yeah. I do signings and stuff there. And actually, you know, they've reordered a few times. They must. But they what's funny is they said they haven't really promoted it, you know, that much. Yeah. But. So I don't know. I mean, maybe they got to give it a good placement or something. But um. well, I think I think they, you know, things do sell when they sit around there for a while, and yeah. you know, it's probably there's it's just probably selling. You know, people come along. You know, you know, I'm sure your book is like that certain kind of reader. You know, yeah. just like every yeah. book is. You know, some people are gonna like Batman, some people aren't. Yeah, and and those people come in every now and then, and they're like, hey, that's that's awesome. That's what I'm looking for. So. Yeah, and I mean, I think the other thing is just like, uh, like maybe even just kind of misunderstanding how, at least for me, I, I've noticed this. Like, I misunderstand sometimes how the sales work because yeah. it's like, like for an indie, selling one issue in a week at a retail is not bad. Because, <laughs> um, like, you know, I mean, a, a lot of when you're in diamond or whatever, it's like as an indie, let's say you get like an order of like 2000 issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be like four to this store, five to this store, you know, right. two to this store. It's, it's like really weird, but it's usually not like this massive quantity. Like if I look at like my local comic shop here, they have like barely got an indie section, right? Yeah. And they might yeah. maybe have one copy of Cerebrus by Dave Sim. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it's Dave Sim. It's Cerebrus. It's like a legendary comic in indie comics. And yet there's one copy. And it kind of has been there for months. Yeah. You know, like it's not like it's moving off the shelf. 
So it's like, um, I don't know, for me, some of it's like a perspective thing. Um, and then some of it's just like, you know, just frustration with you spend like, like with comics, I think it's really easy to burn out because the incentives to do it just aren't as good. So yeah. it, it's kind of like um, what you were describing with like, you know, if you're just doing tons of commissions and you're making good money doing them and then you have to sit down and draw something for no money <laughs> or like a really wildly smaller return um, and just creative fulfillment is like, it's a little hard to, uh, to find the motivation sometimes for that. Yeah. And then too, like, you know, I draw each piece like separate. So I do tend to look at it like that. I mean, I, I sit there and I look, and I'm like, I, I painted like 25 paintings, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and they're all sitting here, you know, and it's not like I'm trying to sell them, but you know, that is, it is in the back of my mind, you know, it's like, I add that up in my head and I go, well, 25 commissions would have made me this much, 25 yeah. of this. And even halfway to the Kickstarter, the Kickstarter only made five thousand, and I probably got three out out of it. By the time you take away all the the you know shipping and printing and all this other stuff, you know. Yeah, so. and it's a, it's a trip because it's like, uh, I mean, you know, I, I guess it's like we're all doing comics because we love comics. <laughs> I, I think so. There's not yeah. much reason to do them. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess the the money in comics would be like optioning, maybe. You know, like maybe that's yeah. where the big money's at is like, you know, if um, if like somebody wanted to option, you know, your, your thing for like a HBO or something. But like mm -hmm. but in general, I, I, I do think. Um, yeah, like most of us are in it for because we, we really love the thing. Yeah, that's but kind of good. Uh, Gary said here. I honestly believe the zone has to be as creative as akin to a guy in his basement building a model railroad. You need to be right. getting fulfillment and joy yeah. out of the process. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. You know, yeah. it'd be nice to get both, you know, because yeah, that's the thing. The, the comics to me are the probably the most fulfilling thing that I do. Unfortunately, yeah. they're not the, they're not, there's not what turn keeps the lights on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, do, but I do agree with that because that's what kind of keeps me, keeps me going at it, you know, because I, I, I'd rather have this hobby than any other hobby. And at the end of the day, like if it becomes like a, you know, it does have that potential to, you know, to make a little bit of side cash, you know, and then like once the vaccine actually gets around, um, it's like, you know, it, it'll be a good excuse for vacations with the family, you know? Or it's like, I'm I'm actually looking forward to cons just for like the, oh, the okay. excuse to take some time <laughs> off, you know. Um, although yeah, it'll maybe. be weird after COVID, like you know. Yeah, it will be weird. I, I just can't imagine like going to a con. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? yeah, there's a but, comment from Scott from "I'd rather be drawn about cons." Having a book but not being able to go to cons and, and book signings is rough. It's like years of of practice and no game time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm not, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because it's like, I'm not under the, any delusion that I'm going to make like mass amounts of money at a con. And that's why I'm like, I'm literally reframing it in my head of like, well, what's the experience of a con? Cause like, I think I'd rather go there and hustle some books and, you know, have a cool trip with my kid and, you know, my wife and stuff. And like, you know, have that excuse to like get out of the house and hopefully meet yeah. some new leaders. If I go there like planning to make a bank, I'm going to be really disappointed <laughs> or I won't be, but then like it's, it's only a con away from disappointment, you know, where it's like you can succeed at a con, but it's like, um, I don't know. I, I feel like I think, yeah. the objective and the objective has to be kind of like, what Gary was saying about comics, it's like, it has to be a little bit of a different objective to, to even do it right. You know, I don't know. No, I, I, I agree. I don't think, you know, like, I don't, I mean, it, it's almost like putting the, the comic in the comic shop and it only selling one or, you know, like I did the same thing. I went to a couple cons with my friend, Mike, 
with the berserker not when it first came out and you know i just had a miserable time because i just felt like man i, I can't sell them you know but it's like it's so damn hard to to sell at a con anyway well, we did get to have dinner that one night so that's right <laughs> i got to see see scott like munch that hot sauce which i couldn't believe but... <laughs> Scotty drinks fire, <laughs> but uh, it was it was fun. I mean, it was a blast. But you know what I mean. It's yeah. like I, I I took that that negative perspective because of uh, you know because I was like oh, I didn't sell enough. I didn't make enough money. Blah blah blah. Yeah, it's, it's hard, especially like what you did where yeah. you did a, a traveling show. Right. Yeah, that, that's why. That's why I didn't. That's true, yeah. I haven't done too many traveling ones just because I you know it's. Just, Man, it's it's a it's there's a big risk. Not that not that you shouldn't take take some risk with with you know art and business and everything, but right, just you know you got to be ready just to lose that money on it, and you know, um, I think though that like, you know, I don't I don't want to be too down on comics though because it's like obvious, like you can make money yeah. doing them, and it's like I've you know like Kickstarter and, and Indiegogo have proved that again and again. And like people are totally doing it on the web and people totally do it with web comics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I feel like I'm being down on them, but it's just more of like, I, I feel like I'm just making excuses why I'm not doing mine, you know, because I don't, I don't know if anybody wants to do a comic and they, and they think they can, can do it. I mean, freaking go for it because it's like, they're definitely success stories. And, yeah. and also, you know, I, I'm sure yours is selling on, mm -hmm. on Amazon there. Yeah, I mean it is. That's the thing that's the struggle where it's like I I think that for me it's like when it, it's it's trying to keep my perspective right. Like what you're describing is actually correct, right? Yeah. Um, my perspective will just get skewed sometimes and that's that's when I find I'm not enjoying it. Whereas like if I kind of view it like, hey, that's cool I have a book out and that people are reading it. Like that's a that's a good, I don't know, at least for me, that, that helps me perspective wise. Like same with like the live streams. Like if I'm like, I, I need to be like this huge YouTube star or something, I'm not going to enjoy doing a live stream, you know? Right. Yeah. But if I'm just like, Hey, this is a fun way to like hang out with people and just kind of appreciate like the, the people who do show up, it's like, it, it makes me have a better perspective. But for me, I always, I always struggle writing that line between kind of having to remind myself to like kind of enjoy what I have or enjoy, you know, um, where I'm at. Cause it's kind of, it can almost become like no different than like the neighbor who like, you know, uh, sees his neighbor's lawn and is like, Oh, like they got this kind of lawn. So now I have to get this kind of lawn and they got this kind yeah. of car. It's like the art version of that. No. And and I and I don't think either is healthy. <laughs> like I, I think it's kind of better to just be like, I don't know, like, hey, it's pretty cool. I have a lawn, or it's cool that like, you know, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, the hard version of keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, yeah. like, because I think sometimes we can get so lost. At least for me, I can get so lost in chasing some idea of something that I kind of lose track of like the cool thing that I have, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but. but, but I don't know when you see somebody that is doing it successful it also shows that, yeah, people are doing it. You can, if they can do it, why not me? You know, Hell so yeah. it does give you some, definitely something to shoot for. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. there are so many people and we're kind of, we're doing a little bit of it. We're not, we're not really doing it. Just like Jeff said, go for it, you know, but but there's so many people, and I, I kind of allude to this all the time when I just say, yeah, my comics aren't what's bring what's paying the, the bills or whatever. But for there are people that it that they are, and why not why not why not change my perspective and focus more on that than, mm -hmm. than the negative aspects, you know? Yeah. Because instead of looking what my experience has been like in the past, you know, project more in the future what it can be, you know, live in the future instead of the present or the past. So. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, man. I mean, like, that's, uh, like, you know, my wife and I just got out of credit debt for, like, the first time in years. And that's how we did it, was just projecting, <laughs> weirdly enough. But it's, like, 
instead of just being buried in it, we were just like, okay, this is the goal to get out. And like, this is what, like a feasible way we could. And then just kind of envisioned it whenever it got hard where it's like, okay, so like, what's this going to be like when we don't have this crappy thing looming over our head, you know? Um, and it helps, you know, it helps yeah. with that. I don't know, but it's easy to also get, like I, the reason I bring that up is it's, it almost feels like a good analogy because it's also very easy when you're like drowning in debt, you know, to be like, I, I can't get out of this, you know, like it's just a, it's, it's, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like a perspective thing that can be really like one can lead to like help and, and the other can get just kind of, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm sorry. I'm probably not making a lot of sense. No, it makes sense. It, it's just like, you know, um, I guess how, you know, it's like that glass half full, half empty kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've definitely fell into that with, with like YouTube, actually, because YouTube is so frustrating because it's it's like you see like guys who you don't feel like they draw as good as you, you know, you, they, you don't feel like they uh, they deserve the success they get. You know what I mean? And And you can't, and you just cannot figure out how to like get like, views you know what i mean like i just freaking you know i'd be like the best thing i could and yeah. like the most you know like on topic type thing and you know i'd freaking do all the keywords and blah 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 all this you know follow all the things and you just like wouldn't matter at all you know and then you just see these guys come in and just fucking fall ass backwards into like a hundred thousand subscribers you know <laughs> and you're just like what you know just like a time and time again you know and uh it would just you know like not so much anymore i would say like for the last like five years i haven't even thought about this stuff but it used to drive me fucking nuts you know <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> because I, it was like so hard i mean i've never had any art thing that's like as hard as youtube like in that sense you know and uh i don't know uh, um that was what totally and you know like another person would come along and look at me you know and i'm sure like probably right even right now they're like well what an asshole he's saying this and he's got like fifty thousand subscribers or whatever i got you know but it's like um that's that's just like a perspective thing you know what i mean it's just like when you got like 86 subscribers and you, you're looking at the guy who has five thousand subscribers he's got a lot you know well, again, but, uh, I, I, you wonder, know. I wonder what the importance of, sub, I mean, subscribers is compared to the importance of views, because like we, we right. mentioned, our views don't really reflect what our subscriber counts are. And I've seen people that, you know, there's people that, that have, uh, you know, a thousand subscribers and are getting, you know, getting 3000 views every single video they post. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's, it's, and I think views are more valuable than subscribers. As probably as I would think because it almost seems like subscribers happen irregardless I don't know you know what I mean well, especially like, if you've been doing it for a while no matter what you do you know um and I, I don't I don't know I'm not sure but then you know like I, I just don't know. Like, you know, it, 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 like, it, it just goes back. Like, this is, I guess, why I've come to the conclusion that, you know, YouTube is almost meaningless. Is, is because, like, you know, if you get a lot of views, you get a lot of subscribers. You don't have a lot of subscribers. You know, you don't have a lot of views. It's like, what's any of it kidding you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know. <laughs> Gary, Gary was asking about cons because I, I, had, I had stopped doing cons before, you know, before COVID. And oh, everything. yeah. Um, and he, he says, I don't know if your attitude has changed, but I was done with cons until COVID. Now I kind of want to just go do something. And he laughed. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I, that, that is that. I mean, definitely that's the thing I missed about cons is, is just, you know, getting to hang out with people. If that was the case, you know, if it, but there, I guess there's other ways to do that without paying, you know, <laughs> all the booth fees and all that kind of stuff. You know, you could do drink and draws and things like that. And, but no, but it's, it's, it is different because there's just so many people at cons that you get to meet and talk to. And I assume, you know, even if it wasn't, it wasn't for the money and everything, that con that you went to, I mean, I'm sure you had fun just talking. Oh, to I had a blast. I had a blast when we went yeah. to dinner and yeah, just hanging out with Mike and, you know, we met like a lot of like hilarious people and yeah. 
I had a lot of fun just talking to people that were in the comics that would come by the table and also meeting other artists there. Yeah. You know, because it's like, I, you know, you get older and you kind of like lose your, your art buddies, you know, like they, yeah. there's just people who fall off. And then, then there was like all these young people who were like, so in the comics, You're like what the, heck? where, where did all these people come from that love comics, you know? So, you know, in that sense, it was a total, it was a blast really, you know, but then, you know, um, yeah, I was just dragging on it because it was like I didn't make I didn't make yeah. you know I was like come on at least break even <laughs> yeah, like no chance yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah I see what you're saying the yeah, experience so. of not making tables sucks but at the same time it's like I think uh, here's something that encourages me I, I know it's weird but it's like I saw um, like Derek Kirk Kim who I don't understand why he doesn't have more YouTube subscribers but. He doesn't. <laughs> he has like less than me, and that's insane because it's terrible. all right. Stay on top of him, Josh. Come on, man. You I'm can do going it. Going to, but, uh, but I don't think he like actively promotes it or anything. But he did an interview with Gene Yang on his uh, on his channel, yes. and um, and Gene Yang was talking about his experience up until American Born Chinese, where like he was telling Derek Kirkim like every convention he did was a loss. And it was just like the shocking revelation to 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 most people because they were like, "Really?" After Eric Kim or Gene who? Yang? Oh, really? Yeah. The, <laughs> and, and, MacArthur and, Genius Grant winner. <laughs> yeah, the MacArthur <laughs> Genius Grant. He also like National Book Award. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, like that guy. So I feel like I don't know if if he had conventions where he wasn't breaking even, you know. I feel okay. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that makes sense. But he even described it where he was saying, like, now he actually misses those times of like going to conventions and, and, and losing money because he got to hang out with all his friends and like hang out with other cartoonists. And there was this like ambitious like process of getting there. It's like, I guess that's the point I'm, I'm getting at is like, I feel like if, if one of us, like, let's say, just takes off and gets like a million YouTube subscribers, that would be insane. But, or, or like our art just suddenly gets collected and like the, you know, art of books and we're in art history or whatever. It, it'd be a shame if we weren't enjoying the, the process of not being there. Cause it's like, cause, cause most people I know who like get successful miss that hunt and miss the process so it's like i don't know that's that's what i'm getting at it's like i'm trying to kind of enjoy just the process i'm in because like if i get somewhere i'm gonna miss where i'm at and if i don't get somewhere i'm gonna feel like an idiot for not enjoying you know i don't know i don't know if that makes sense no that makes sense i guess so but then i also think that like you know in my own life as you get more you know as you get success or what other people term as success as you go you never look at any of that like success it's never like you go like oh man i made it you know what i mean no, you this don't. is like a big deal <laughs> i mean it, it's yeah you look back on you know the things you did and it's just like well i did that for a while now i'm off to some other problem i'm trying to solve you know so i, I don't know i don't know that it's uh one of those things where you can ever like you know kind of sit back and like enjoy what you did i don't know you yeah, might be I, right though. i get you i get i get i kind of understand that though because it's like I, yeah that's a good point because it's like jeff you've worked for marvel you know but it's like you're probably not like waking up every morning like no oh, yeah i worked for marvel you know it's like it's just it's almost something you forget about that, it, you know it honestly is and like for years you know especially before the internet came along I never thought much about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I think that like now, like people bring it up, you know, sometimes on shows and stuff and it, and it's just like, I don't know, you know, it's kind of, it, it was kind of neat, but then, you know, I, I don't know that that was definitely a situation where I never was like, yeah, man, I'm the, I'm the shit get, you know, Rob Liefeld bow down to me, you know, Jim Lee kiss my heel. You know, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it makes, but I mean, it makes sense because it's like, you know, um, I mean, it, like in my own career, I've had clients that like the first, 
you know, young me starting out would have been like, what the yeah. hell? Like work for them. And I forget. And it's not like I forget because I'm too cool or something. It's like, I just forget because I literally forget, like I'm on to the next thing, like you were describing. And it's like, yeah. um, and like, you, of, you told me yeah. about like your situation, having like success with the t-shirts and stuff which I, I think is like a goal of like a lot of people. And um, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Did you even like feel successful when that was happening or were you just like in the struggle? You know? I mean, there were times where I felt it felt good, you know, it's kind of like, um, but, but I think they're very fleeting. It's kind of, kind of like anything yeah. else, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. And it's a weird thing because it's like, even when I was in that, I, I like didn't want to do that forever you know like i just yeah. wasn't enjoying it um because there was definitely a time before i ever kind of like sold anything on the internet where i was like on the hunt to like figure out how to make money on online with my art yeah and you know what i mean it just like i even remember when i first started like selling sketch cards that was how i first like started selling art on the on the internet and and being very surprised being like wow i can actually do this and then being like well wait a minute i can like get out of my job you know what i mean yeah and that was that was like a that was definitely like like big to me and yeah. you know like if you ask me now you know when i look at my commission list i'd have freaking killed for my <laughs> for my for my list or my clients that come back time and time again things like that you know what i mean i was dying for that back then yeah and now i kind of like you know um I don't want to be, you know, ungrateful or whatever, but sometimes, you know, you definitely feel like, ah, uh, you know, another one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy um, to forget. Um, yeah. I remember be as a kid, like not a kid, but like, you know, 20 something year old, like 21, I was working at graveyard shifts at an AM PM. And I remember my boss would ask me to draw stuff sometimes. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is sweet. I'm getting paid to draw on the clock, you know? <laughs> and it like, I just, the idea of getting any sort of money for art was just so cool and yeah. different. And then, yeah, you're right. Like you kind of get used to it and you almost forget, like it's, it's pretty, you know, I, I've said this before, but it's like, we're kind of cheating the, the system by being able to make any sort of living at this at all. Yeah. Um, I feel like the more we can kind of ride this out, like the better, um, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but. You mean like the, the further we can like kind of continue to make a living at art? Um, yeah. I mean like. Or like they figure it out and like shut it off on us. <laughs> kind well, of I mean, the more, the more we can ride out the, uh, the making a living off of art because it's like yeah. it, it really is like a it, it kind of doesn't make sense to i don't know it's it's not um like it's a hard job sometimes but it's not like it's not yeah. like laying brick or something you know it's like no but but <laughs> it, you know it, it doesn't I've laid brick before and it didn't take me nearly as long to learn how to lay brick as it did to learn how to do art. So yeah. the, the, it, I, I understand what you're saying, Josh, but it shouldn't be like that. I mean, I shouldn't take pride in the fact that I'm che I feel like I'm cheating the system because I'm being able to work. I, I'm being able to make a living doing what I want because it should, it should be that way because people should respect the fact that you spent this much time learning how to do something that not everyone can do. Yeah. So there should be value in that. You know. Oh yeah, there should be value in it, and and it should be respected. But my point is, like, we're making stuff, and like, and yeah. and and uh, and and in a society where where it's like it's it, you know, we're very encouraged to just kind of follow a like toe the line, and and kind of just get a career of some kind, yeah, and then just consume shit. Yeah, my in laws still feel like I need a job. That's what what's up. <laughs> My in-laws still feel like I need a job. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's like exactly what you're saying right there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely have had moments like that. I think yeah. the time they started taking me more seriously was when I bought a house with the money, you know, and I was like, <laughs> right. and they were like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, my art bought a house, asshole. <laughs> like, yeah. um, but, but, but I guess what I'm getting at is like, it's more just like, I feel 
like what we do is sort of going against the grain a little bit and from like what most people would expect. And I think it's kind of cool that we can all do that. Um, and like I said, that's me and my proper mindset. Whereas like a lot of the times I'll be like, oh, I need, like if only, like first it's like, if only I could get a book published and then it's like, okay, yeah. if only, if only I could get to selling this many copies and then you hit that and it's like, well, if only like, I don't know, I guess my point is it's just um, for myself, it's like, I definitely have to remember to like not play that game too often. Cause it just doesn't, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's kind of a little more fun to just be like, yeah, like I, I'm actually doing this for a living, you know, or like, yeah. Like instead of like in, in the case you were describing, you know, which I know you don't mean that in a disparaging way against your clients, you know, it's like yes. all of us appreciate clients, but I've definitely had times where when I've had a huge pile of clients, I've resented it because I've just been like, I kind of like you would if you were, you know, at any job, you know, where you're just yeah. like, I just want a day off. Like, I don't want to do overtime today. Like, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, but, I, but I also know like in, in, in a, you know, in a right frame of mind, it's like, sweet, I get to paint like this many paintings or whatever, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard no, to you, find I mean, you're right. It is weird. And it's funny. Like I, it does go both ways though. Cause I, I definitely appreciate it at times too. I mean, like I take more than, than I don't, you know what I mean? I do. I do really like, like my job and you know, I, f I mean, it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, I can pull it off cause I've seen so many people that can't and um, I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just, I don't have to have a job, man. That's awesome. You know, I don't have to have a boss. That's super cool. So, yeah, that when is you think about way. it like that. It's, it's just it's me, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. But I, I get what you're saying, and and you know, it's kind of funny too because I remember like when you were working on your comic, and you and you you'd almost say that a lot of times, that maybe in your videos, or I don't know, maybe it was to me, or just you know, you're saying in the video, and I remember it as you were talking to me or something. But it's like, um, you know, you were talking about having the graphic novel in your hand, having a big thick graphic novel, you know. <laughs> And yeah, you got that thing. You actually got it, it physically in your hand, and plus you, you're published, you know. And um, yeah, it's just I guess it's just always that next step. And yeah. I really and now yeah. it's also like now I need the second one. Like I gotta get it. Oh, you man. know, I mean, I th I think it's kind of yeah. similar to Berserk and that too, where it's like, yeah, you, know, you, you finish the first one and you have this like fleeting moment of joy. And I yeah. think this is the life of cartoonists, but it's like you have this moment when you open that printed book and you're like, yeah. And, or yeah. you're like, oh crap, the printer messed up the color here. <laughs> and like, right. you know, but regardless, like you'll have that one moment where it's like you get the, the physical object and then it's kind of like, okay, now I got to get the next one. You know? Yeah. It's weird. It's like a crack addict. <laughs> we need yeah. dopamine hits. Uh. Um, Scott, like, I don't know. Do you feel like that with uh, with Young and the Dead, too, where it's like, do you still feel the joy from, like, the first few issues, or are you kind of like, no, I need to get this next one done? Like, the are you, you, are you talking about the quality, or the... what? Just, like, the sense of satisfaction that you might have had when you first saw it in print, you know? Do you still feel that every time you see it, or are you just kind of like, nah? Maybe not as much as the first time, but I still feel it. Like, yeah. like when I, you know, when I when I get a new issue back from a printer, you know, no matter what it is, like even even with the KDP books and stuff, mm -hmm. when I just got one today and I was looking through it, and I'm like, oh man, this is, you know, I'm happy with this. So, so yeah, I still I still get a little bit of it. It's not it's never like the first time, but but I don't know. I mean, I I. I'm confident enough in my own work and I, 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 I like my own work that, you know, that when I, when I see it in print, I'm like, ah, oh, I, I did an all right job on this thing. So yeah, yeah. My, my problem is it just wears away. Like, like me, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy. Like, and you're right. I totally relate like anything printed. It's like, I'm a print junkie. So it's like, if I say like make a poster and I, I get that poster print, I have like that one second of like, yeah. And then that's it. 
<laughs> it's like, it's, it's a weird thing. And it's like, I don't know what that is, um, but it's a good feeling. It's just weird that it won't. I, it's kind of interesting that that can't kind of hang around for a bit. But I guess if it did, yeah. then we wouldn't really be motivated to make like the next book or the next, you know, video or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I definitely felt that with the Berserker not though, like what, especially like the first comic, because I I feel like I was trying to do like my own comic, even though I'd done comics before. Yeah. It's like I never got one of my own done, and so like yeah. when I when I got my first like the first one printed, even though I wasn't happy a hundred percent happy with the print and everything, you know, like everybody. But it's just like it was it was a damn good feeling. Like I'm like yeah man, I fucking did that thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And. uh yeah, I need to get the rest of them done now. And I need the graphic novel. I'm like you. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. And, dude, like, you're not that far from one, you know? It's like... Well, it's uh, like well, it's like six issues. So I got to do six times the work of the first one. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> so, like... What, or five what times, I guess. What I'm trying to figure out is, like, does the graphic novel have to be the complete thing? Could it be, like, three issues? Well, it could be, but you know what I mean. It, it, to me, like the only point is to finish it. You know what I mean. I, I guess true. if it didn't all fit into one, I'd make it into two. But yeah, like, like you know, my next goal I have in my head is to get to the end of of this first like big story arc. You know, which is six six issues planned out. Um, I feel like you can get there. It's just like the the other issue there is like with what time though. <laughs> you know. I don't yeah, know. Like, I, when, yeah. I'm amazed. I'm amazed any of us get comics done. Yeah. Hmm. I, I'm i like kind of blown away, which, you know, I know I'm kind of changing the subject, but <clears throat> reading your uh, your thumbnails on Instagram, like I really am enjoying that. And uh, wait, 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 Jeff, you're on Instagram? <laughs> just... I know. What the hell? I used to rail against Instagram. Uh, no, I'm not on it. No, I'm, I mean, I am, but I don't really post. Sorry, I, I forgot mean, about that. Yeah. That's, so, that's such an old joke. You're like the only one who, who got it. I, I don't think it's been so long since I even remember doing that. I was like, oh, is Instagram. Oh, my God. Why would you want to be on that? You can only get it on your phone. It's like so lame. I can understand. I, I think I, I was one of the last stragglers like with MySpace back in the day where I was yeah. like, it's Facebook nonsense. Who wants Facebook? Yeah. I'm here hanging with my friend Tom. But I do really like Instagram because it's just images. Like I don't know yeah. why. I don't even really look at Facebook anymore, but I, I, I pull up Instagram a lot on my phone. I really do like it. Um, yeah, it is a good it's, – it's a good visual – thing you know yeah but i was gonna say though i i mean that it's it's it that i love that story and it's super interesting i mean it, it's like i know i was commenting for a while but you know you can't comment on, on every damn thing but um it's like i'm still i'm still reading along with it and and it's just it's like it's a good story and it's like you really do comics well you know so oh thank you i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a goal right I, th I think we're all we're all kind of trying I, I i actually think uh i mean dude it's like the flavor you're bringing to comics reminds me of like judge dread back yeah. in the day like at its peak you know yeah or like actually a lot of a little bit like tank girl uh, yeah i like tank girl a lot a little bit like the covers of Tank Girl, not not so much the interiors. Yeah, but like stylistically, there's just something cool and fluid about that. I don't know. I, I love the painted comic thing, man. That's that's a beast, but it's it, it it's awesome. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how you keep that up, actually. And I I think people are willing to wait a little more for a comic like yours, Jeff, because it is painted and everything. I mean. It's hard enough just to, you know, for for indie artists to put out, you know, a, a, a black and white comic kind of, you know, on a yeah. regular basis. So. Well, I mean, I mean, that's the thing is, it's just like I'm just not working on it though. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's like yeah. if I was working on it, even though you know it still wouldn't be super fast coming out, but it would just, um, uh, it would come out. 
<laughs> at a reasonable rate, you know, rather than, you know, like now it's been like a year or so since the first one's come out. And so I kind of get razzed about that when people hear how long ago it was. So. But, um, yeah, well, I can't say anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I just thought that's why my, my, my comeback is like, well, Scott's comic has been going for five yeah. seven years. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> Uh, and the funny thing is, I, I don't get a lot of people complaining. So I think people just realize, hey, we'll we'll get it, we'll get it when uh, when it comes out. You you you're you're good at the, you know, you always tell people that it's just like, well, this is my comic, and you know, you're just like, you're excited about the comic, even when you're not working on it for like a year, you know, yeah. and yeah. and it's just like, and I'm always <laughs> I always feel super guilty. And, you know, act like, well, I should be, you know, I don't know. You just, however you handle it, it just seems to work for you. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just not good at that. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I get on a show with somebody, it's just like, then I then I immediately start thinking, yeah, man, I got to get back on the comic. I got to, but then, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so, well, I'm, not, I'm not trying to convince you to do that, especially, you know, because I know, you know, like I said, sometimes you got to pay the bills, so. Sure. But I know you'll get back to it. So. I think I don't. I don't think there's any way I won't. Yeah, and you should at some point. I mean, um, and I think too. You know, like, which I I don't know how we got on this topic, but right. <laughs> I think too, it was like, um, it was a little bit of like the first issue kind of derailment. You know what I mean? It's like the Indiegogo happened, so you immediately stop drawing, you like ship everything. You know. And then on top of that, you have like the book in your hand. And then, and then I stopped on the web comic to publish the thing. You know, it was like everything yeah. kind of like lined up in this big storm of like stopping me. And then, and then I just never got back on the, like the, the rhythm of like, cause I was just, I was trying to like, I, I can't remember what it was, but I think I was like drawing a piece and painting it the next day or sometimes, you know, drawing and painting one day, but that was kind of my rhythm. And when I was doing that, it was getting done, you know. And when yeah. I stopped doing it, it just kind of stopped getting done, you know. Yeah, that's one of my biggest fears, actually, because, um, like, luckily, I think this project I'm working on, because this is for a pitch. Yeah. Um, but it's, like, it's five pages, so it's, like, all I have to do is finish these. But they're still comics, so it's, like, I feel like I'll be able to get get back to the, the roughs or whatever, you know. Um, cause I was really close to, I think I'm about maybe 15 pages from like finishing the roughs and being able to go to, Oh wow. Uh, yeah. So it's like, it's not that far. Um, but it's just like, yeah, I worry about that too. Like losing momentum because, uh, I definitely, f I, I've learned that about myself as an artist where I, I'm definitely a person who needs habits. Like I, mm. I don't do well with like spontaneous as an artist, I don't like, actually, honestly, just as a person either, I don't tend to do as well with spontaneity. Like if I spontaneously decide to work out, I'm going to gain like 50 pounds in a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. But working out, that's a good example of, you know, like comics is definitely like, you know, you got to work out <laughs> like, you, you know, a lot and, uh, you know, consistently to you know, get gains in comics and also in working out, you know what I mean? If you're one of these guys who does like, you know, your comic page every like three weeks on the weekend, you're never going to get anywhere, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It's, yeah. it's tough. It's, it's definitely one of those things too, where it's like, uh, you know, Scott has done this too recently, but it's like, I'm doing the hundred days too, just because what the hell I figure I'm going to do like 365. Nice. Um, because why not? That's what we should all be doing anyway. Um, oh, you're going to do the 365, 365 days of comics? Well, I mean, probably not actually 300. Well, probably more like 360 or something. I'm sure I'll have a day or two. Um, <laughs> but my point is just like I figured I'm doing comics every night anyway. So I started yeah. a while ago. I don't know if I've even finished it yet. But well, did it, it was like. You should do it, Josh, because it's like, uh, didn't, didn't Marshall try to do that, like, like five, six years ago or something, where he was like, I'm doing comics, like, every day for, like, a year or something, <laughs> and, uh, 
I don't know if he did it or not. I didn't. I didn't keep up. He didn't definitely didn't do videos every night doing it. But yeah, you should do it. I think he kind of did it. Yeah, if I remember. He did correctly. actually do it, really? I so I think wow. so. More kind of. Um, I mean, I think it's possible. It's like it's not that hard to do daily, um, but it's like it's hard to do it. Sub, sub, well, it is hard to do daily, but it's hard to do substantially daily. You know, it's like. Yeah. Um, like Scott, you know, this time around was doing an hour minimum, right? And it's like, that's kind of what I've been doing, but I've, I'm ranging around like three to four hours, you know? So it's like, Jeez. I, I feel like just doing 30 minutes, it, it, it's not yeah. going to get you like, I, I'm not, you know, knocking it if that's all that somebody can do, but it's like, that's not going to get you that far. <laughs> Yeah, there was one night I remember me and Jibberin were listening to you guys. And it was like you and Corey, I think, and maybe Scott. Maybe it was the Arcast, and then Scott was just like working, and it was you and Corey talking. And it was like you were like you were saying that there needs to be like some sort of. Um, I mean, it was almost like what me and Jibber would say, joking, but you were like serious. <laughs> Where it was like you were saying there needed to be like kind of like some kind of a bar or something where like these hundred days of comics guys like, you know, basically you were like, say like a, a half hour is like nothing. And, you know, they needed to get they needed to get like some submit a significant thing. And then plus you want you guys wanted like goals set, you know, like you want like weekly <laughs> goals. You know what I mean? And it was it was so funny. I thought it's just because I, you know, there's just so many of the hundred days of comics guys that, you know, I mean, it's a tough challenge anyway. Yeah, it and is. It's tough. You know, people start comics and stop comics like all the time. Yeah. And you know, people come in and they flake out like two weeks later and stuff. You know, and uh, it was just funny. I thought because it's like you guys were like really. You you were like gonna like reshape the hundred days of comics into like a, a tougher challenge and all this stuff and uh, I was like yeah, yeah do it, it. All these things. <laughs> because <laughs> the one thing I always mention in the beginning of my videos is that it, it sounds simple the rules are simple yeah. but when you actually start doing it it's not, yeah not simple well it's a beast I think what makes it extra hard is actually just the no day off you know yeah. like because to do anything for like a hundred days without one day off is very hard. Yeah. Um, I, like, I guess the, the thing I'd like to see more is I don't even know how we'd implement this. And I, I don't think this should be part of the hundreds, but it's like, I do feel like there should be like a finished my comic club, <laughs> you know, like where it's like, cause I do think like actually finishing is, is important too. Cause it's like, yeah. there's a lot of people who do challenges and maybe like do, um, I don't know, like inktober and like, you yeah. know, um, every challenge in the book, but like finishing a book, I think is, is a good goal too. Just like, you know, on top of like the hundreds, you know, I don't know. Cause I, uh, cause I feel like that satisfaction that like comes from that like moment where you have your finished book, you know, absolutely. Uh, that's, I think, that's worth it. Yeah. A hundred days and you, and a, a hundred page comic at the end of it. That's what I say. Oh my Jeez. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so, I don't think I could say that. Not me. that that would be like that would be like a challenge we would lay down, and then like the one guy who gets it done is David Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like yeah, I, I don't know. Like that's where what's so hard with like with me and comics too is like I'm a guy who like you know it's like if I don't like a panel, I'm gonna do it again. You know, yeah. I won't I won't leave it. You know, yeah. And that's I know that's a failing in me, but it's like it's just how I am. Like I cannot stand like to leave like something that looks wrong and yeah. um you know that's i don't know it's, it's just one of the the things like with deadlines where the deadlines would like trip me up you know if i was like okay every page every week you know but if then if i if i don't like it you know <laughs> if i can redraw that thing you know yeah so i don't know man yeah that's always tripped me up whenever i've tried to do the you know the 24 hour comic things yeah, and it's, it's so like, different on your own stuff compared to like client work too, because like client work, there's like a deadline you have to get it done, you know, whether it's paying bills or whatever. There's always a time limit on what you're doing. Yeah, but it's like you know, with comics, of course, it has to be your your passion project, and you know, there's like 
<laughs> it's just the, it's the worst, man. It's like when you're trying to do your best work and stuff, you know? Yeah, and it's, it is one of those things, though, because, you know, we were talking about this at the top. It's like, yeah, I know there's success stories in comics and stuff, but it's like, you know, comics, the payout usually isn't quite equivalent to what it would be with just regular client work. Yeah. And it can change, and maybe you kickstart and get, like, a million dollars for your comic, and if that's the case, good for you, you know? <laughs> like, it's yeah. amazing. But it's like... It is one of those things where I've come to the conclusion, at least for myself, where it's like, if, if I'm not putting out like my best thing that I feel proud of, like, what's the point, you know, like, cause, cause I feel like I don't want to do half ass comics. Like I just yeah. don't. Cause I, cause I do plenty of half, not half ass work, but <laughs> work within a deadline where compromises have to happen, you know? So it's like, why compromise on your own work? And, that, keeping that in mind, like obviously, like not overly perfecting it to where yeah. you know it takes ten years to get it done, just to where it takes five. That's that's <laughs> what, yeah. I mean, that's like that fine line because it, it, you know, it is like that. You know, I mean, I have that too, where it's like that. You know, paralyzation by what do you call that? Like perfection paralyzation or something like that. Yeah. And that can happen to me too. And then like, you know, it's fine. It's totally fine. If I look at this in two weeks, I'll be, I wouldn't even notice the stuff I'm looking at right now. But right now I'm like dying over like, you know, like whatever, whatever I feel it's wrong. The face is unbalanced or something, you know? So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, dude. yeah, I, yeah, I know that too. Just, you know, Cause I'll look back at it, it. Sometimes it just helps to take a step back and like, yeah. if you're feeling frustrated, just come back in the morning or something like, ah, it's not too bad, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, we've been going for over a little over an hour and a half. Do we probably want to like start wrapping it up? Is there anything that, that, that anyone? Wait, to you guys, anymore? you guys didn't get me unburned out from uh, YouTube. Come on. Give me the answer. What's, what's the, what's the, what's the call? <laughs> how, how, oh, we're supposed to start. We're supposed to have solutions. Yeah, I wanted the answer. I wanted to get unstuck. Or what the, what's up? With the what answer. else? Did I, I have an idea. Show? I I have an idea, which is why not just um, why not just stream? Like just just well, live stream since you're working anyway. People off too much. <laughs> I know, but I'm you just saying that like too. people off too. So I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> just live yeah. stream, and if if you get people pissed, like just mute them. Do you do you live stream by yourself? Yeah, Josh? it's weird. Like, I'll show up and just yeah. start working and rambling, and then people pop on. And I've started inviting people. So, like, you know, every once in a while, if somebody I know is in the chat or they ask to come on, I'll have them on. Yeah, that 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 is really cool. I'll have to check that out. I guess I just haven't been paying attention to YouTube. I didn't realize you were doing that, but like, I I I. I, and I've tried a couple times to go by myself. Man, I have a hard time with that for some reason. Like, I'm okay, like, talking to people, but I don't know what. Like, talking to the chat is really hard for me for some reason, you know? I'm not. Yeah, it's not. also hard to pay attention to the chats and draw. <laughs> right, yeah. So it's, it's a weird thing, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think, like, that could be a way to, like, spice it up and keep, you know, keep it pretty interesting, too, because you'll get different people, you know? Right. And then Frank will be on every single one because Frank's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frank but I've had awesome. him on too to hang out, cause like like live and stuff too, because it's just, um, I don't know, it's it's a neat way to, I my thought on it is like, why not? Because you're going to be working anyway, you know? By the way, that's a rad drawing, Jeff. Yeah. Well, thanks. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we we, we came up with any solution for you, Jeff. But <laughs> no, my best shot. I, I, don't know, I, I just I guess I don't worry too much because I know eventually Jeff will be back on YouTube and then maybe he'll drop off a little bit, but he'll be back. I mean, you know, <laughs> or like you said, if you're if you're you know if you're on Instagram, I mean that you know whatever the case yeah. is. I don't know. Do you have any ideas like that, like for for what you what burnt you out in the first place, and what you'd like to maybe do different? Or oh, not really. I mean, I, you know, I I, I kind of like look at like Scott. It's like I feel like you know, 
they'll they'll come a day when I'm like, hey, you know what? I feel like doing some YouTube, you know. <laughs> and yeah. then I'll be all back on there again. And uh, you know, I think it's just uh, yeah. you know, I don't know. Like lately, I just I just haven't felt like like being on really. So yeah, that makes sense. You know, yeah, I, I kind of like it's gonna come across. So it's it's if, if exactly. you're not you know you're not feeling it, it's probably better just take a little break. I you don't want to be on and they just be like, oh, oh, oh. and I'm bad about, you know, and this, and you know, like, like when, you know, with Gibran, it's, it's like, you know, and, and I totally own up to this. It's like, you know, we go on like once. I'm like, all right, let's fucking do this every day. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm bad about that. Like, okay. Uh, you know, let's make this a daily thing or like over, over kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, Dive in like too deep, I think sometimes where I should just be like, you know, it just happens when it happens or something, you know. So, um, I I burn myself out that way too because like yeah. the daily videos are hard, you know. I totally understand that because it's kind of what I've been doing with the streams, and then I I actually had to pull back a bit till I figured out this thing. So I might start doing the night streams now because I was like, I can't reveal like the story or the characters in this thing. So I was like, oh, I can just like you know do like a censored kind of thing and yeah like that's cool locking out the type and then like people aren't gonna know who i'm drawing <laughs> that's that's really neat and so like you're, you're doing a pitch like a five page pitch for like a graphic novel to like a company that would like pay you to do it or something or like publish it you know or like you're working with a writer or something or uh yeah so like um this just happened so a couple things happened it's like right after covid hit like I was laid off for a little bit not laid off but like put, sent home for a little bit and like it was this weird thing where it's like a couple weeks without work and so I was like well what can I do I can finish my graphic novel get that shopped out to publishers and then while that was being shopped out I wrote the script for book two and then while I was waiting for like the galleys and stuff from two stories book one my sister had a script that I like pitched to my literary agent because it was really good. Mm. And I was like, this, I'm not just pitching this because it's my sister. It's, it's good. You should look at this. I don't know if you'd want us to do this. And then she was like, yeah, this is brilliant. So they started repping my sister and then, uh, and then we built, we built a pitch that was being shopped around, but I looked at, I re looked at the pages recently and was like, I didn't feel good about them. Mm. So I'm redoing the pages in a different style that I think will work better than like the rushed kind of crappy style I was doing them in. Um, and so I want that floating out there while I'm finishing book two, you know, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully by the time book two is done, I'll have another thing going with that. Um, that's the hope is like, I, I want to constantly have something being shopped by my lit agent while I'm, working on the current thing that's my that's one of my goals is like if, if i can have something shopped by my lit agent every time i'm working on a published book then like in theory i could keep working on published book yeah right yeah in reality though it could also end up coming back to bite me where it's like now you have to get two graphic novels done and it's like i don't know how <laughs> yeah that's what i was thinking like if they actually take it and then they're like all right when are you gonna do it yeah. And like that might be a issue, but you know, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, it'll be a good problem to have. So um we'll see. Yeah. But I really like the script too. I don't I don't do that with just anyone. Um in fact I usually hate collaborating with anyone on comics. <laughs> yeah. Um unless it's like a short or something, but it's like I don't tend to like teams with comics. Is a bad thing, right? I don't know, Jeff. Do you like collaborating? No, with comics? I, I don't. <laughs> I'm really bad at that. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't like to. Yeah, I was I like excited to just draw what I. Or sorry, sorry. I was just saying. I, I was excited about the um, western you were working on for a little bit there too. Yeah, I kind of I wrecked that. So, which that was a neat one, but you know. It's it's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I don't know. Did we walk around the topic? Like I said, I don't know if we gave you any answers, Jeff. We just kind of. Nah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. It was a, it was a blast, you guys. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it so it was fun to hear from you, dude, and and see how you're doing, and and also hear that you're still making art too. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see the art drop off. Like that would be, like to me, it's like. You know, it'll be fun to see you doing YouTube content, but as long as you're making art, I, I'm happy. If you ever stop making art, we'll have to we'll have to have like an intervention or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm. I, you know, I've always done art, so I can't imagine what would make me stop doing that. Um, which is kind of what I do. Yeah, I think that oh, yeah. we got to say that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, Jeff. I mean, I don't know, Josh. Where Where can everyone find you? Um, you can find me, uh, on, um, joshuakemble.com. And then you can also, uh, find my book, two stories, the graphic novel, it's 122 pages, hand lettered, hand inked, and hopefully handed to you in print, uh, from Amazon. You can, you can get it on Amazon. You can also get it on, uh, Barnes and Noble. You can get it on like, uh, basically any any site uh yeah so you definitely can't get it on Pornhub I somebody mentioned that on there and I, <laughs> I don't think it's uh available there because I uh, think I might be getting fat commissions if that were the case although then again I've heard bad things so maybe maybe I wouldn't be getting getting much from it all right to go check that make sure it's not yeah. on there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm, I'm sorry. I really need to verify this claim. <laughs> Somebody said Joshua Kimball on Pornhub right now. I rock. Don't do it, <laughs> Frank. No, no, actually, Frank, don't do it. You stay yeah, there. You're gonna, you're gonna reveal <laughs> my, you my horrible past. <laughs> 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 the past I've tried to outrun my whole life. So, Jeff, for, for incredibly patient people who are willing to stand in a long line while you get get through the commissions you already have, where, where do people find you? Um, well, I mean, you know, my, my website, jefflafty.net, but I'm not, I don't post there. Instagram, I'm on there, but I haven't been posting. YouTube, go subscribe, but nothing will happen. Yeah, just go, yeah. go sign up. <laughs> and back to you shortly at some point. You know. If you yeah, if you want Jeff Lafferty, the only way you're getting me is like a, a dinner invitation. So yeah, well there you go. It's always gonna be a sweet <laughs> dinner. <laughs> anyway. All right. And uh, as far as me, like I said earlier, you can find my stuff at circbooks.com. I still do have uh, that print that Josh did. It's available on my in my online store. Definitely check that out because it's super cool. And uh, check out Making Comics 101 on YouTube. And besides that, we do this show every single week, The Artcasters. We, we typically do it on a Thursday, but that can change. And uh, But if you know, it, it also bounces back and forth from my channel to Josh's channel. It can get a little confusing, but we can alleviate, alleviate that by just having you join our mailing list. So we don't spam you or anything like that. All we do is about 30 minutes before we go live, we send you out uh, a an email and it'll have a link to where you can watch the show. It'll tell you who the guest is, what the topic is, all that stuff. And uh, so definitely check out that out. There's a link in the description as long as, as well as a link to Jeff Lafferty's channel and our channels. And I just want to thank everyone in the chat. I know we didn't get to everyone, but we always appreciate you guys chiming in on the chat and, uh, and we will see everyone next week on Josh's channel and stay tuned to that mailing list and you'll find out who the guest is going to be. See you then. See you guys.